You are watching the ACC on ESPN. This afternoon, we are in Blacksburg, Virginia, at Virginia Tech, NC State in town. It is senior day as Virginia Tech tries to go for its sixth straight win. Both teams coming off of huge victories just on Thursday. And we welcome you to Blacksburg. Pam Ward along with former Wade Trophy winner at Purdue, Stephanie White. And boy, this Virginia Tech team since a loss to Duke avenged it big time in their last game. Really on a roll in large part because of their big two, Georgia Amar and Elizabeth Kitley. Yeah, absolutely. Everything starts with Liz Kitley inside and she is the front runner for ACC Player of the Year. And I love how Kenny Brooks moves her around on the floor. Sometimes she's getting it back to the basket. Sometimes she's getting it cutting to the <laughs> rim. She is so good at that reverse pivot face up, knock down the shot. You know she's the centerpiece of everything, but the emergence of Georgia Amor has taken this team to another level. Not just her ability to facilitate, but her ability to stretch the floor and knock down the three. Amor is the reigning ACC Player of the Week, and the last time these two teams played a couple of weeks ago, look what the dynamic duo did. That's 56% of the points. That's pretty good. Very good analysis there, Steph. <laughs> now the Wolfpack already a little shorthanded, and more so today, but first, what a comeback win for them on Thursday in overtime against Carolina. Yeah, it really was impressive. The last four minutes of regulation and into overtime, they were playing very well on the offensive end of the floor. In order for NC State to be successful, multiple players have to score the basketball, and the challenge has been consistency. Can they consistently find ways to put the ball in the hole? And the problem today is there you see 21 points a game not available. Diamond Johnson, they're resting her. She's been struggling with the bad right ankle and for Sanaya Rivers an upper extremity injury that occurred in the Carolina win neither one of them available so a very short rotation for Wes Moore and there is Liz Kitley what a career she has had yes the reigning player of the year and the favorite to win it again this year in the league it's pretty incredible the numbers that Liz Kitley has continued to be able to put up when every game plan is about making her uncomfortable. And they have done great things, certainly the adjustments after the loss to Duke when she was one of nine from the floor, then put up a double-double on Thursday. Off one foot, air ball, but a good save try by Kayla King. Isaiah James, number 10 for NC State, making her first career start. Lineup looking very different. Madison Hayes steps into the starting lineup. Had been starting earlier this season, but it is certainly a challenge playing a good team, a really good team in Virginia Tech and doing so shorthanded. We take a look at Tech Taylor Soul, a grad transfer from Boston College. Trailer, who started her career at Purdue, and then Kitley and Amor really anchoring it. And Kayla King, who might be the unsung hero on this team. Amor continues. Well, Pam, Georgia Amor had her way with the Wolfpack on the road in the pick and roll action. And Westmore said that was his concern. And right away, coming to it at the end of the shot clock, she was money. 27 points in that win against NC State. First time they had ever won in Raleigh. Amor hit five threes. Hobby. Good job to get it up and over Liz Kitley. Hobby, the first year starter after backing up. Lisa Kunane, who played AAU ball with both Kayla King and Liz Kitley. That's too much face. <laughs> You've got to be right on Georgia Amor. Every time she's coming off of the screen, she cannot have that much time. James, nifty around the basket, Hobby. Doing Camille Hobby things, the offensive putback, and she has all four points for State. And Moore gets it over to Soul, and Taylor Soul has really started coming on. Coach. Brooks said he had a meeting with her after the Miami game, and since then it's, she's been a different player. We certainly know she's a player that can fill it up. She had a lot of offensive responsibility in her career at Boston College, and trying to find her way in this system 
was key. And I think Coach Brooks said we, we had a we had a come to Jesus meeting, so to speak, and, and, and really she started to understand and take it to another level. Played a very different system, especially defensively at BC. Virginia Tech is a team that doesn't take a lot of risks on defense. They don't have a lot of steals, and that's something that Coach Brooks is fine with. He likes being at the bottom of the league. In that. <laughs> well, I think they're, they're solid. They find ways to beat you by execution. Where's Kipling? Georgia Amor says she can't imagine not playing lightly. She and Kitley had made such a great combination. Amor, the only player on the floor for Virginia Tech who did not take part in Senior Day activities because she's Camille just a Hobby. junior. Hey, Camille Hobby, averaging eight and a half a game, already has six. Well, I like what Westmore is doing right away. He's putting some pressure on this Kitley on the defensive end of the floor, getting Camille Hobby touches inside. And we keep in mind as Liz Kitley takes a ride at Hobby. Keep in mind, this is a Wolfpack team that has seven players right now. Only three perimeter players. So finding ways to, to get multiple players touches, to share the basketball is going to be important. James puts it up in it. Sophomore from Virginia Beach has some family members here in the crowd. Virginia Beach, by the way, not close to Blacksburg. So that was impressive. Well, and that's what we're used to seeing from Taylor Soul, her ability to get to the rim. She adds a different level of energy and athleticism to this team. Kenny Brooks said, you know, we, we, we don't have anybody who does what Taylor Soul does, and that's a prime example. Coming off a really good game against Duke. Kenny Brooks in his seventh season here, 21st overall. Four-time coach of the year in the CAA back when he was with James Madison. And this is a team right now that is looking very good to be a host in the first and second round of the NCAA tournament. Well, you know that this is a, a solid team and a solid program, and you know, what they've been able to do, they found their footing in this win streak, they found their confidence in this win streak, and certainly you can tell by the atmosphere what a great opportunity it would be for them to host. Yeah, a lot of students in the student section to our right in the right end zone at Castle Coliseum. Asia Gregg with the shot. Senior from Florence, Alabama. Kind of waited her turn a little bit. Both teams shooting well so far in this game. Tech six of eight from the floor. Bobby working against Kitley. And the first foul called on Kitley as we hit our first time out. Virginia Tech shooting 75% of the from the floor. Oh. Welcome back to Blacksburg where it is senior day and this is a look inside their locker room. The seniors coming up with the design theme. And they let Georgia Amor also chip in. Kayla King among the seniors. And of course, Elizabeth Kitley Thing Coach Brooks talked about was managing the emotions on this day, having it pregame. But Steph, that's a lot of seniors. It's a lot of seniors. It's a lot of production, and you see the numbers right here: 5,000-point scores. Ashley Wusu on there as well. Uh, but you know what this senior class has has meant to this program. Kenny Brooks says that they've changed the culture, they've changed the landscape, they've made it cool to be a Hokie. And they really have taken this program to another level. And you know, there's players who have played together for a long time. You've got some, some new players that transferred in. But Liz Kitley told us, you know, this is a great group of girls. I love being around them every single day. It's been special. Camille Hobby is off to a great start. Hits both of her free throws. She's got eight of the 10 NC State points. NC State down two starters in Sanai Rivers and Diamond Johnson, just seven players available. Kitley was able to corral the pass, and then Jada, boy, pardon me, Jakia Brown Turner called for getting in her way. Westmore in his 10th season and maybe his most challenging season this year. They 
and took both the regular season and tournament titles last year. Different story this season with a lot of new faces. A lot of new faces, a lot of adversity with injuries. You know, certainly, Westmore understands what it's like to graduate a, a really special senior class, the class that he graduated a year ago. And, you know, it has been a challenging time, and you've seen flashes of brilliance from this Wolfpack squad, and you've seen flashes uh, of, of not so great offense, especially. Trailer with a step back, that's wide right. Kamaron Hobby comes up with it. Lisa Kune, number one for us, their great point guard. Ty Crutchfield, who really was the glue. Taylor Jones. Kitley with a block. Amor trailed for King. Greg hustles over, but she's beaten to it by Camille Hobby. Hobby already with eight points and a couple of rebounds. JBT, bottom of the net. Such a slow start for her right against Carolina on Thursday, then that was her couple of threes and that late in the fourth part really fueled their comeback. Yeah, she had three big threes. And I think Chiquita Brown-Turner has to be a player who hunts shots. She had 18 in that ball game. The last time these two teams met, just three on four field goal attempts. In particular, with no Diamond Johnson on the floor, no Sanaya Rivers, Chiquita Brown-Turner has to be a go-to offensively. And there is Sanaya Rivers on the left, Diamond Johnson on the right. Diamond, the reigning ACC Sixth Player of the Year, but has been bothered by a right ankle that she hurt in mid-December, and they've decided to shut her down. They expect to have her back, hopefully for the ACC tournament. Amor with that step back three, which has sort of become her signature move. King crashes to the floor, the ball stays with Tech. Well, the thought process for sitting Diamond Johnson is they want to have her healthy, as healthy as she can be before the postseason. And, you know, you certainly can't argue with that, and this is a team who's had a a really tough schedule. They played a challenging schedule. They put themselves in position, had a rough stretch, but they want her healthy and ready to go in the postseason. NC State right now projected to be a six seed by Charlie Cream. He would drop him to a seventh should they lose today. The injury factor is huge for so many teams. And there's no good game to not have your two primary, primary ball handlers. However, this is a Virginia Tech team that's not going to pressure. They're not really going to get out in passing lanes, not turning a lot of teams over to shot clock winds down. Camille Hobby goes to work. So it is a good opportunity for Isaiah James to get some reps running this position in case they need her down the stretch. Isaiah James, the all freshman ACC last year. Coming off a 17 point effort in just 22 minutes against Carolina. Oh, and the big play going to the rim and sent the game to overtime. And she was terrific. Greg Amor got it. Georgia! Georgia Amor in her last four games hit 19 of 43s. That's 40. 8%. We asked her about it. You know, has there been anything that's different? Has it been a natural progression? And she said, it's just confidence. The work that I put in, I came to Virginia Tech as a pass first true point guard. And now I'm a scoring point guard. Foul called and trailer crashed to the floor. Appears to be okay. Well, Keanu Trailer is so good at getting to the rim and she attacks right there, doesn't get the shot to go, but gets to the foul line. James called for her first personal foul. Trailer, the best free throw shooter on this team. Coming up tomorrow night. To the top teams in the Pac-12 and some of the best in the country squaring off. UCLA plays at Maples against the Cardinal. They've won three straight in this series. Coverage starts at 9 Eastern, 6 Pacific on ESPN2 and streaming live on the app. Number 15, Ashley Owusu. Ashley coming in for the first time for Virginia Tech, the Maryland transfer who missed 10 games, broke her pinky, had to have surgery on it, and has not played a lot of minutes as of late. It was really tough timing for Ashley Wusu when she did get hurt. It was, this team was just starting to, to find their rhythm on both ends of the floor. She goes out with injury, misses a lot of time, and it's tough to get back into the fold. 
Chains hits that three to get NC State back to within two. And what a great opportunity for Isaiah James. She is another player who probably hasn't gotten the minutes that she's wanted to get, but now has an opportunity to go out, to play a lot of minutes, to play through some mistakes maybe she's not able to play through before, and she's playing very confident basketball. River Baldwin has checked into the game along with Mimi Collins, so we've already seen all seven players that State has available. Shot clock winding down. Did she draw? Yes. Greg called for the charge. It's the first turnover for Tech. Well, great job by James of beating Deja Greg to the spot, of selling the contact. Approaching a minute to go in the first quarter. NC State hanging in there. Brown Turner off the rim. Offensive board taken back out. By Hayes. And now River Baldwin, the Florida State transfer. Shot clock winding down. Five seconds left to go. Brown Turner. One more pass. James. Confidently knocks down another three. And that was really good ball movement. There have been times this season where we've seen NC State take a lot of quick shots with not a lot of extra passes. That was great ball movement. Got the best shot on the floor. Five ties and three lead changes in this first quarter. A couple of seconds difference between the two clocks. And more. He's up high, gives her a screen. Amor missed badly to the right. But Greg was fouled, hunting the rebound. That's on James. That is two on her. And that's not good. They have no depth, and James is so important, and she quickly is given the hook, goes to the bench. Jada Boyd back in. Amor, short again. Collins with the rebound, and yeah, NC State down two starters. But they're getting some scoring from James. Oh, this is a great dribble punch against the zone, making the extra pass, and Isaiah James has come to play. Wes Moore, you ready to go on a fast break with me? Yeah, baby, let's go. Celebrity crush? Beyonce! Favorite Beyonce song? The one she wrote about me, Drunk in Love. Favorite sports movie of all time? For Love of the Game, Kevin Costner. A lot of people think I look like him, so I didn't, yeah. I see that, I see that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Wes Moore, thanks for going on a fast break with us. I love that. Pam, I love that. You, you don't often get to see the personality of some of these coaches and Wes Moore, I, I, I love it. He had us laughing out loud with that. <laughs> First time we saw that was Chris Tatana Scuddy who did that with him. And uh, yeah, Coach Moore, you know, Southern guy. And then he comes out and throws out the Queen Bee stuff. And, yeah. yeah, we didn't know that she wrote that for him. So yeah, that's in the Kevin Costner look like. Absolutely. He's a uh, double now. Absolutely. Meanwhile, NC State, as we start the second quarter, Pam Ward along with Stephanie White. NC State down to just seven players. Isaiah James on the bench with a couple of fouls, and State has the lead. Ron Turner hit the last shot for them. Now Maddie Hayes gets it over to Mimi Collins, Mimi and they Collins. are clicking. Biggest lead of the game. Five-point advantage for State. Well, Pam, the thing that we're seeing right now from the Wolfpack is just multiple players getting touches on the floor in the half court. Have a tendency at times to get stagnant and go one-on-one -on -one as Deja Craig has an answer with the three. But we're not seeing that early in this ball game. No primary point guard. So the ball is just moving, not sticking. And Johnson out with a bad ankle. Sonia Rivers also unavailable with an upper extremity injury. And you're right, they're just rolling. Ball, Taylor yeah, Baldwin's turn. Excellent execution, using the on-ball screen, taking what the defense gives you, everybody playing with a sense of urgency and great tempo. Taylor. Too much of a wide lane for Taylor Soul on the other end. 
NC State, 14 of their 25 points in the paint this afternoon. Liz Kitley starting the second quarter on the bench, getting some extra rest here on senior day. Jada Boyd working on Soul, knocked it away. Right idea on the switch. Wanted to take advantage of that switch and, and just couldn't quite deliver it. But on this drive, that's really good recognition by Maddie Hayes with the extra pass and Taylor Soul getting to the rim. 20 seconds left on the shot clock after the kick. Kitley will check in at the next whistle. Don't win with the outside shot. Rims out, ran to try to get it, but was unable to hang on for Baldwin, the Florida State transfer. And Kitley's back in the game. So far, she's got four points. She and Amor have been on great runs for this Hokie team in a five-game winning streak. Now at five, Greg recognized, drove into the lane and banked it in. Three ball reversals on an offensive possession for Virginia Tech. Understanding what they want to get out of offense, staying disciplined to the process and the options on the offensive end of the floor, and they find a way to get high percentage looks. Greg comes up with the rebound after the Boyd miss. Now Amor. Faked like she was going to go in, set up Soul a little bit too strong. Amor second chance, buried it off glass. Maybe not what she intended, but it worked. Still counts as two. <laughs> Hustle plays, extra efforts, multiple possessions. Last three games. See what Georgia Amor has done, and Wes Moore takes a timeout. Tech with the lead. Rick, Rebecca, Christie in the studio, still to come up on the halftime report. Hardware coming to the way of Bloomington for number two Indiana, plus Utah survives against Arizona State, who is now 0-16 in Pac-12 play. But in terms of Virginia Tech, Christy, we're starting to see the rhythm come around for the Hokies offense. They're getting there. Elizabeth Kitley, just two of four from the floor right now, just four points. They're only three of 11 from three. I'd like to see some more threes fall, loosen up some things in the paint for Kitley to get loose. And for NC State, they have to be thrilled with how well they've taken care of the basketball. Only one turnover and two of their primary ball handlers aren't playing in this game. And Pam, Steph, we know the depth issues. NC State down two starters, only down by two right now. Yeah, thanks, Brick. That's uh, certainly a concern for NC State, but they are hanging in this ball game so far. And these two teams played in Raleigh. First time that Virginia Tech had ever beaten them in Raleigh. A little Amor magic. She just has such a great feel for the game and understanding. Calling for the handoff, wants to get in their little pistol action, fakes it, gets right to the rim. And did you see the finish with the offhand, Pam? Yep, she is someone who has developed her game, told us that she was more of a pass-first player coming up through the Australian system. And she is just a dynamic player on an incredible run. Three straight 20-point games for Amor. Well, it's no surprise. I mean, her improvement, she's a, a gym rat, she's a film rat, she watches film consistently with Coach Kenny Brooks. She wants to improve and wants to get better. And she has because of that discipline, because of that time and dedication. Kenny Brooks talked about how he would demonstrate and have Amor right behind him, literally, while he was demonstrating moves. And he said it wasn't until someone filmed it or shot it on their phone and looked at it and said it was, she was like his shadow, doing exactly what he was doing. And there you see Amor best in Hokie history with that string. And you see who is conspicuously absent from there is the person who just hit the shot, <laughs> Kitley. Right. Tech has hit six of its last seven shots. 
well, one of the things that Kenny Brooks alluded to, to us is, you know, we have an unselfish group that sacrifices good shots to get great shots. And because of that, they shoot it at such a high percentage. Oh, boy, Taylor stole him. Maybe Collins got tied up a little bit. Shot goes up. Mimi Collins just attempts to get in there at the offensive board and gets a hold of Taylor Soul. First foul on Collins, who played a key role in the comeback win against North Carolina the other day. It's a 10-0 Virginia Tech run. As we are midway through the second quarter, Isaiah James back in the game, NC State electing to go to that 2-3 zone, try to keep her out of more foul trouble. Good I move, think, right? Yeah, good move, and I think they're gonna have to continue to change it up, first and foremost because of their lack of depth, but secondly, to try to keep Virginia Tech off balance. And as soon as James came in, she took the ball away from Kitley, and Collins finished on the other end, and that breaks that 10-0 slide. Diamond, number 35 and white in for Virginia Tech, one of the seniors. Doesn't get a lot of playing time. And some injuries early on in her career. Getting some playing time right now. There she is. Bounce pass into Kitley, who is surrounded. Diamond passed up the shot. Kitley working so hard. She just has such good footwork. She doesn't get rushed. She stays on balance. You can tell she works on her fundamentals. Her footwork is impeccable. Hokies foul against number 23, Kamas Hokies just do such a good job of getting Liz Kitley touches, and she sees Camille Hobby come as the secondary defender and just does the step through. Use the glass for the finish. To the line number 10. ACC Player of the Year last year and averaging a double-double this year. The only ACC player averaging double-digit rebounds should be ACC Player of the Year this year. I think she's the front runner. She has been the most consistent player. She continues to put up these numbers night in and night out. Big 12 Monday men's doubleheader at 7 Eastern. Louisville is at Duke and then follow that up with a top 25 matchup. Kansas and TCU, both games on ESPN and the app. James back in there, the calculated risk, playing her with two personals. Delivers at the free throw line. And NC State with E4. Brown Turner hounding Greg, who was able to put in a one-handed shot. Ooh, Greg, 10 points. That is one off her season high. It's never been a big score. Another whistle on the other end will send James back to the line. Greg has the ability to be a big scorer. She just has always played whatever role it is that Kenny Brooks needs her to do. What I liked so much about De'Asia Greg today at shoot around, she was always off to the side communicating with her team. Whenever Kenny Brooks would ask the question, she had the answer. You could tell she's a very high IQ player understands the scout, understands what they're trying to get on the offensive end of the floor as well, and communicates it to her teammates. That must be invaluable, especially someone, as you mentioned, doesn't really care if she scores, does everything else for her team. Four point ball game. Anymore. Nine points, one of five from three. Diamond, a senior from Hanover, Pennsylvania, averaging less than a point per game in her career, nails the three. Biggest lead of the game now, seven for the Hokies. Kitley reached in. Hokies foul number 22, Kayla King, her first. This is just really good execution on the step up screen. Georgia Amore finds the three point shooter and Taylor Guyman. This is what you want to see. You, know, you mentioned it off the top of the show. It's going to be an emotional day, senior day. But when your seniors get the ability to go on the floor and make plays, that's huge. Uh, big play, second block of the game for Kitley. That last foul, by the way, on Kayla King, not Kitley. King has not scored for Tech, has only taken one shot. 
averages nine points per game. One of the seniors, there she is. Good friend of Kitley's. They've been playing together since they were 14 years of age. Turn around. Stop Liz that. Kitley. It's just so hard. You have to get in Liz Kitley's space. She, her pivot, reverse pivot. Oh my gosh. Isaiah That's James, are you kidding me? I mean, she is just putting her head down and going to the rim. Well, Liz Kitley on the defensive end of the floor. This is what she does. Uses that size, keeps the ball in play. And then again, that reverse pivot. If you don't close the gap and crowd her space, she's going to get that off all day long. And Isaiah James has been spectacular in this first half for the Wolfpack. Couple fouls on Amor. That's 15 points. James making her first career start. 15 points, just four off her career high. Back in, here's the ball for the Hokies. King gets it into Kitley, that's that connection. Kitley reposting. Bobby doing a really good job. Still, but it doesn't matter, right? That was terrific defense by Camille Hobby. That's just better offense by Liz Kitley. James threw it away. That's the second turnover for NC State. Both teams, just two turnovers apiece. Okay, working on Hobby, who stuck her hand in there, making life difficult. Collins! Basket's good. Count it. After Collins fouled, Kitley. This is one of those possessions where when the ball's loose and you don't get it, you just really have to play good position defense. You can't take a chance. This kid is too good at recognizing. This is a Virginia Tech offensive squad that's really good at recognizing and take advantage when you make mistakes. Point play for Kitley. Virginia Tech has made nine straight shots from the floor. Hence their biggest lead of the game, up by 11. Brown Turner goes in and finishes with the left hand. Came off 18 points against Carolina. Trailer found herself some space. That spun out, but Liz Kitley a little bit too far under the basket for the follow. A minute left to go in the first half. Madison Hayes puts up the three. Goes out of bounds. Ball goes over to the Hokies. Scoring NC State by 10 in this quarter. Officials are dealing with a clock issue right now. Karen Criado over there, Billy Smith, and Mark Resch, our officiating crew this afternoon in Blacksburg. Get it up to 47 seconds. Trailer bringing the ball up now with Amor with two personal fouls. Going to sit out the rest of the half. Shot nailed. Kayla King's first points. We well, knew it was a matter of time. Kayla King is too good at finding the open spots. And now the crowd, most of them on their feet, wanting one more stop to cap off what's been a really good second quarter. 
so good, in fact, that the 29 points scored by Virginia Tech in this quarter is a new season high for them in the second. Liz Kitley well on her way to another double-double. Yeah, she's been terrific early in this ball game. Virginia Tech is executing on all cylinders offensively. Shooting 63% from the floor in the first half. Let's get you to the studio now. Christy Winter, Scott Terp, Rebecca Lovo, and John Brickley. <laughs> oh, that was great, fam. That's Steph, thanks so much. John Brickley, the Hall of Famer, Rebecca Lobo, Christy Winter, Scott. Our game, Virginia Tech, 47-36 on top of NC State. Most points allowed in the first half this season by NC State. We saw, though, glimpses in that first half where they really played solid basketball. Well, it helps to be able to set up your defense when you're scoring on the offensive end. And you heard Steph White talk about it a lot in that first half is when NC State is at their best offensively is when they're moving the basketball, shifting sides of the floor, and sharing the ball. So what did that look like when they did it in the first half of this game? We'll, we'll start with a play late in the first quarter. Virginia Tech is in a zone uh, on this possession. So NC State does a good job shifting sides of the floor. Basketball comes here, you can still attack the zone, and when you do, you're gonna draw a defender and get your three-point shooter an extra second to get her shot off. Really good ball movement, shifting sides of the floor, dribble penetration, and a little bit of a kick. Now on this possession, same thing. They switch sides of the floor. Ball started here, right side. We're moving it to the left side. Then you're gonna see an on-ball screen because now Virginia Tech is playing in their man-to-man. -man. Get the on-ball screen, the defender gets caught up, dribble penetration, drop pass, nice job. Two really good looks for NC State. Where they get in trouble is when they start going a little bit too much one on one earlier in the possession. Well, Elizabeth Kitley, I thought, really came alive in that second quarter. Virginia Tech started having great rhythm because they had good spacing. They knocked in four threes, and I think that really affords great spacing on the interior for Virginia Tech. When you can penetrate and kick out, you don't have to pay a lot of attention to Elizabeth Kitley until you do. She's going to set herself up right in the paint and get in there and set some great opportunities up for her team. She's shooting 70%, as I said. She's 7 of 10 from the floor. Georgia Amore, she's 4 of 8 from the floor right now. So she had 27 points the last time these two teams met, and she's getting hot as well. But I think the rhythm right now for Virginia Tech is favorable to what they want to play with. Titley right now, 15 points, 7 of 10 shooting, 4 rebounds in that first half. Virginia Tech trying to make it 6 straight victories. Still to come. More highlights, talk about the National Player of the Year. What about James as well? Hitting the shot, giving Virginia Tech a double-digit lead right now on NC State. Liz Kitley, the reigning ACC Player of the Year. 15 points, four rebounds. Virginia Tech up 11. We get you back out to Blacksburg for the second half coming up. Welcome back, a bird's eye view of Castle Coliseum. You see the football stadium here in Blacksburg as well. Virginia Tech with a big second quarter, leading NC State by 11 as we get ready to start the second half. Down two starters, but Zaya James coming through in her first career start. Yes, she certainly has, and this is just execution against the 2-3 zone. Everybody packed in. Great extra pass, finding Isaiah James. She was aggressive to the rim early, knocked down a couple of long-range threes. But Virginia Tech just really clicking on all cylinders. Multiple players getting in on the action. 11 assists on 20 made field goals. The main reason they're shooting nearly 63% from the floor. 77% in that second quarter in which they outscored the pack 29 to 17. That is the most points that NC State has given up this year in any second quarter and the most that Tech has scored in a second quarter. As you take a look at the numbers, Virginia Tech closing in on paint points. Both teams as expected holding on to the ball. So Take it's been a ball. clean yes. first half. Giving them opportunities on the offensive end. Pam Ward along with Stephanie White, the head coach of the Connecticut Sun in Blacksburg Senior Day for Tech. Four of their five starters are seniors. Trailer, one of them charges to start things off. Offensive foul, Big news for NC State, down two starters, Diamond Johnson, out with a right foot injury. 
Sanaya Rivers out with an upper extremity injury. You know, when you're thinking about those two players, your primary ball handler's on the floor. Diamond Johnson, only double figure scorer for this Wolfpack team that already struggles at times on the offensive end. Foul coming up against Virginia Tech as Jada Boyd hit the deck. Jada Boyd in the first half only took one shot, no, no points for the junior from Petersburg, Virginia. Second leading scorer behind Diamond Johnson. And the foul is on Kayla King, her second. James, hot hand, stays hot. 18 points, one off her career high. Coming off of an 18 point game against North Carolina as well. Zai James shows that she has the ability to fill it up, and now she's getting more opportunity because of the injuries. Ball kicked by Hayes. Madison Hayes, sophomore from Chattanooga, who is a, in her second year after transferring from Mississippi State. Nice inbounds play. Trailer. We saw Virginia Tech today in shoot around, really repping their offensive game and repping their out of bounds plays and the pace with which they do it in practice. I mean, it's not a walkthrough, right? They're going game pace, game speed, so their timing is really good when they get on the floor. And we're trying to get into Kitley. It was tipped. Amor just needs a little bit of space. That one is off to the left, but Taylor Soul doing what she's known for, crashing the boards, couldn't come down with it. Amor just one of five from three. After coming in, hitting 19 of the last 40. Just under 50%. And Tear, the player of the week in the ACC, averaged 26 points in the games at NC State and against Florida State, and was co-national player of the week. That's how good she's been. Another whistle. Foul for 23, Deanna Trailer. And that is Her third the foul. third on third Trailer, who just picked up a couple of quick ones. So she will sit down. Virginia Tech with a much deeper bench than State. Just seven available players today. And Kitley got a hand on that. Should be her third block of the game. And then another foul. He's gotten this, this is a terrific crowd. And they're surly, all these early fouls in the third quarter against their Hokies. Check it in, number 35, Taylor Kaiba. Camille Hobby going up for that tip shot. It looks like Kayla King just kind of got underneath her. It was a box out, the shot went up. Third foul on King. So Guyman comes back in for her, in and out. Rebound, Greg. Great look. Oh, what a pass. Amor to Seoul. Perfect. So many guards have a tendency to over dribble in that situation. Not Georgia Amor. She had an eye on Taylor Seoul the entire way. Delivered it on the money. Boyd's second shot of the game. Got another one. Kitley. Yeah. Not going to miss. Miss Kitley just does such a good job of finding the open areas. Because she understands how to move around within the system, she doesn't get caught thinking she has to just be in one position. She finds the open area, and she's always shot ready when she catches. Kitley with another rebound. Quickly gets it up to Amor. Seven boards for Liz. A change of direction by Amor, who's fouled by Hayes. Just look at this transition. You can see Taylor Soul streaking the right side of the floor. Georgia Amor had her eye on her the entire way and delivers that pass on the money. Kitley bottled up for a second. Amor from Australia has played some Australian rules football. Gave it away that time. And the third turnover for State. Hayes barrels in. And another off the rim. Kitley might have got thunked there. 
Miss Kitley. Teams are physical with her, needless to say. And that's the game plan. <laughs> that's the game plan. Physicality, try to wear her down, try to make her uncomfortable. Bobby did a really good job on her in the first quarter. Fade away, tough shot, and another foul on NC State. You saw the result of that physicality in her one for four outing at Duke. And this team learned from that. They learned that they had to keep her on the move, get her the ball in multiple positions on the floor. You know, she always does such a good job of, of finding the open area, but Kenny Brooks said we kind of went back to the drawing board, and decided to move her around a little bit more, and it's been successful. Looking ahead, some upcoming games. Wolfpack and Durham taking on Duke Thursday night at 8 Eastern on the ACC Network. And on Sunday, the Hokies finish up their regular season at Georgia Tech at 4 Eastern time. And the ACC tournament getting underway in Greensboro a week from Wednesday. We're going to be there. We are. It's hard like to believe it's already here, right? This is going to be an exciting ACC tournament. Duke had a fight today before winning in Charlottesville. Pulled it out, winning by four. UVA, a much improved team. Be a, a great tournament in Greensboro coming up. Boy, Greg and Baldwin both crashed to the floor. It's on Baldwin. You got to dig in right here if you're NC State. You got to find a way to get a stop. Get to the other end, get a score. It's not going into the screen. That is not the way to do it. Georgia Haymore is too good. And no, she hasn't knocked him down with as much ease as she did in the last matchup, but she is always a threat. Amor is a player listed at 5'8", but she's got terrific range. Hit five threes in their win a couple weeks ago against State. And the Hokies are rolling. Coach Moore said he was most concerned about stopping the big two. Kitley and Amor chewed him up the first time they played him, and that's happening again now. Yeah, I think that you just have to find ways to make other people beat you, and right now it's too easy for those two. Mimi Collins knocks down a jumper, is able to quiet the crowd a little bit. But it's got to be in the game plan. You cannot go underneath the screen against Georgia Amor. You've got to have multiple players defending her in a two-man game. You know, NC State certainly hobbled by injury, lack of depth right now. But look at the activity level on the defensive end. Not the same that we saw in the first half. Amor had that one rim out. NC State just five points so far in this quarter. Here's the giveaway. Taylor Soles not giving it up. degree of difficulty over the shoulder. And bounced off of Amor. Kitley grabs another Wolfpack miss. Kitley has hit the 20-point mark for the 37th time in her brilliant career. Does have a year of eligibility left. Has not said what she will do next year. I did go through the senior day ceremony. She's graduating in May, brilliant student. Collins working on Seoul. shot up in the white jerseys under the backboard. It had been a close game is getting away from the pack. Georgia Amor starting to heat it up a bit.
Pam, I'm sure the scouting report does not say go underneath the screen. You cannot give her that much space. She will make you pay for it. Liz Kidley's having herself a day. Almost a double-double, one rebound away, getting it done on both ends of the floor. The Hokies moving her around. She looks really easy. She's always on balance. She always plays with great pace, gets high efficiency shots. She's come to work. There we go. On her senior night, I asked her before the game if she would get emotional. She says, I'm, I'm already emotional. So she was, seemed to hold it together pretty well, but we've seen it where teammates get can get emotional when their other teammates go through this. You had a senior day at Purdue. Were you tough tough guy, Steph White? Did you get emotional? I'm like Liz Kidley, though. I'm, I'm an emotional <laughs> person. Um, but not really, because, you know, when you have an opportunity to host the first and second rounds at home and you're likely going to do that, um, you, you, you know that you're going to play a couple of more games and celebrate with your teammates and your fans at home again. So it was a different feel. Virginia Tech projected to host in the first and second round, and all you did in your senior year was win it all. Good way to go it, out. It makes it feel like you just you, you never finished, right? You go out on the win. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, so the Way Trophy winner is a National Player of the Year, Stephanie White. Ms. Kitley. We have votes, right? You vote for Player of the Year in the ACC? Yes. Number yes, 33 do. in your program. Number one in our vote for Player of the Year in the ACC. Another timeout yeah, with Tech Up 18. College Game Day crew is going to be in Iowa City a week from today for Iowa and Indiana. Caitlin Clark leading Division I both in assists and triple doubles and right up there in scoring as well. What a year the junior has had. She's had a terrific year. Player of the year favorite, I think, is, is Caitlin Clark. National player of the year. Yes, national player of the year. That matchup with Indiana, who clinched a share of the Big Ten title today in their win over Purdue. First since 82-83 for Terry Moore and Switchers. Sold out gym as well. Yes, over 17,000 fans. Taylor Soul, look at that recovery. I mean, that was not easy to get back into play. Take that charge. Foul was on James for the offensive foul, and Guyman is standing on the sideline. Only their fifth turnover. Virginia Tech now on a 12-2 run. Only five points for NC State in this quarter. Season long, the third was nine in the game against Georgia. Early in the season. River Baldwin over Kitley. Missed everything. Changed the tra trajectory, no doubt, because Kitley was closing. Collins. River Baldwin blocked by Kitley again. That is the fifth block for Liz. Boy took steps, or they're going to say there was a foul. Jada Boyd is somebody who, who's got to consistently be involved offensively for NC State. Well, she's a player who at times can put up big numbers and then at times tends to disappear. And you know, that speaks a little bit to the, the inconsistencies that this Wolfpack team has, has faced individually, collectively. And it takes them all to play the way that Westmore wants this squad to play. That is her first point of the game. And again, especially today, Diamond Johnson and Sanaya Rivers, two starters, both out with injuries. It's about 21 points per game sitting on the bench. Georgia Amor has a double-double, her second of the season. Also has a triple-double. Double-double with points and assists for Georgia who had a triple-double against Nebraska. The first triple-double in Virginia Tech history. 24 points, 10 rebounds, and 11 assists for the kid from Ballarat, Australia. That's in Victoria. I knew that. 
1204. SEC Big Ten Super Tuesday College Basketball Doubleheader. It's men's stuff. Tennessee and Texas A&M at 7 Eastern, followed by Indiana, Michigan State, coming up Tuesday. Oh. ESPN and the app. It's certainly an opportunity for us to let the Michigan State Spartan community know that we're all thinking about them and, and, and keeping them in our thoughts and prayers. And just a, another tragic day, and it was fantastic what Michigan did, right, when yes. Michigan played with yeah. Michigan women. Yes, wearing the jerseys with the heart and the Spartan logo. And Baldwin River finds the bottom of the net, her second basket. Very rare for a Wolverine to wear a Michigan State anything. Yes, it yeah, is. With the, the green heart with the emblem, the Michigan State Spartan inside, very classy. And the women's basketball team and their athletic teams get back into playing after the tragedy. Of course, there was a campus shooting here at Virginia Tech years ago as well. Absolutely. Greg has to throw one up. Now the shot clock is off for NC State. Just eight points in this quarter. Virginia Tech hasn't hit a field goal in five minutes, but they still take a chunky lead into the final 10 minutes. Baldwin has to shoot and hits the three of all things. River Baldwin who had only taken one three all year and missed it, knocks it down to close out the third quarter. And NC State just four made field goals in that quarter, down 13. It's been all Hokies in this ball game. They're finding ways to get it done on both ends of the floor. Elevate Her is a Virginia Tech campaign to recognize women in sports, striving to achieve three major goals for student athletes and teams, championships, leadership, and equity, elevating women in athletics and celebrating the next 50 years of Title IX so the girls and women everywhere will have equitable opportunities in sport. Virginia Tech wearing them as their shooting shirts today. Pam Ward and Stephanie White joining you from Blacksburg. Virginia Tech is up 13 on senior day. NC State shorthanded down a couple of starters. Diamond Johnson, Saniya Rivers out with injury. So just seven healthy players and they did not have a good third quarter. Starting off with another miss. Two of them, James and Boyd. And Elizabeth Kitley, with that rebound, has another double-double, the 50th of her career. So a double-double points and assists for Amor, a double-double points and rebounds for Kitley. Kitley, turn around. Where's Kitley? Not only does she seem not to miss, she never hits the rim. <laughs> right, <laughs> nothing but the bottom, right? But she's so quick with that reverse pivot. I mean, she catches it, and, and you have to know that's her go-to move as a post defender. And you've got to find a way to stay up and crowd her space and make that shot as difficult as possible. She's going to make some. You just have to try to make it as uncomfortable as you can. And you also have to give credit to the passers. You know, the passers are getting her the ball in positions where she can just step right into that move. Kitley today, 10 of 13 from the floor, 10 rebounds. Five blocks. Brown Turner, a little bit too strong. Second chance. Now Baldwin throws it up with her left hand. And the three-pointer that Baldwin hit to close out the third quarter was the first of her collegiate career. Three years at Florida State, she never took one. Took one earlier this year for the pack, missed it, and then hit that one. The shot clock was winding down. She didn't have any time to think <laughs> about it. Put it up and in to close out the third. There's Amor, shot clock winding down. Kitley contest 
Good job by Jada Boyd to go over there and get in her face. That was a great closeout by Jada Boyd. She got there, she closed up the space, she made a difficult. River Baldwin with the left-handed hook going to work on Kitley inside. Virginia Tech faithful getting a little restless. JBT wide left. King with the miss. Trailer tried to take it away and Kitley got in the way, but Boyd recovered nicely. Jada Boyd lost her balance as she went into the lane. And now it's a five on four. King with the shot, but they're going to say Taylor Soul committed a foul with the moving Offensive screen. Foul, number 13, Taylor Soul, her second personal foul. Taylor Soul's second. He scored over 1,500 points at Boston College. You could see the, the chicken wing at the end, but I felt like if you saw it from the front, it looked almost like maybe Collins pulled her arms that way. Collins working on Soul. Knocked it down. Mimi Collins. It's a nice look inside. You had mentioned how much of an impact Mimi Collins made in the second half of the game against North Carolina. Extra effort, multiple possessions. Reed has been trimmed to 11. And another whistle away from the action. This time a foul on the pack. We're going to get Baldwin for holding Kitley. First one on Baldwin. Remember Baldwin just trying to work for a position. Swims through on Kitley. Kitley look, looking at the it. official. Come on. Puts it up over Baldwin, a little bit too short. And Kenny Brooks is, doesn't have many negative things to say about Kitley, but one of them is she could be too nice on the court. Doesn't sell a lot of calls. Not a flopper by any means. I'd like for her to be a little bit more nasty out there. That's a really nasty that shot James? by James. Zaya James with a new career high 20 points this afternoon. And she's trying to get the bench to get into the game. And a huge comeback against Carolina on Thursday. They have another one in them. Absolutely, slowly but surely just chipping away one possession at a time. Doing a much better job these last few possessions of making shots difficult for the Hokies. Zaya James ha has really been an emotional lift for this team. She's come with great energy to start the ball game. She's been encouraging her teammates. First career start for James, paying off with a new career high in scoring. Brown Turner. Baldwin gets the quick double by King, who backs away. Kitley got her hand on it again. It's a 14 to three NC State run. Virginia Tech has gone almost four minutes without a point. One more, gets around the Kitley screen, gives it right back to her buddy. Where's Kitley? It's too good, Pam. I mean, Georgia Amore just gets wherever she wants in that two-man game. Madison Hayes tries to go over the top, then she tries to ice her and keep her on one side, and, and Amore is just so good at coming off and finds Kitney on the money in the pocket. Amore now with 11 assists. When, when you have a guard that, that really can manipulate the possession oh, any way that they want to, I mean, it is incredibly difficult to guard. And then you take away two players who could possibly defend Georgia Amor and Sanai Rivers who could use her length and athleticism and Diamond Johnson. And it just, it, it puts so much pressure on your defense to be perfect. That's a great point, particularly Rivers who at 6-1 is a really good defender, unavailable today. And now Amor is, Amor is shaken up. Well, 
Madison Hayes defending on the, looking to post up. Georgia Amor got her right in the head with the elbow. I'm sure the officials are going to review this. If the officials will go take a look at that, we will take a break in Blacksburg. A lot closer than most people uh, expected, certainly between those two teams. Meanwhile, intentional foul. intentional foul was called on Madison Hayes on this play right here. The officials said she separated the elbow from her body, led with it in contact to the head of Georgia Amor. I agree with that assessment. So Amor gets a couple of free throws, and then the Hokies get the basketball. Georgia has tied a career high with 11 assists in this game. She and Liz Kitney, their roommates, they do a podcast together that is very entertaining. And uh, they have combined for 58% of Virginia Tech's points tonight. And that was Westmore's concern. Yep. He said, we have to make them uncomfortable. We know we're not going to stop them, but we have to try to be disruptive. And they've not been able to do that. Trailer lost it going up. And because she recovered, that's a double dribble. Final week of the regular Taylor season Taylor coming up. Taylor Soul. Taylor Soul checking back in. NC State goes to Duke and then finishes with Pitt. Virginia Tech goes to North Carolina and Georgia Tech. And then the ACC tournament gets underway. And that seeding is going to be very interesting. A lot of five lost teams all bunched up trying to get that fourth and final double by spot. Boyd is fouled on her way. Hokies foul on the ring, that in the Asia Gregg, her third personal foul. Asia Gregg picks up her third. To the right number five, Jada Boyd, shooting two. Amor, almost every time there's a stoppage, goes over and gets some words in with Coach Brooks. Yeah, it was interesting talking to Kenny Brooks about that, and he said that every free throw she'd come over in the first couple of years of her career, I'd be telling her what to do and what I want. And now it's more of a conversation. She's coming with suggestions, telling me what she sees. She is definitely an extension of me on the floor. And we saw her sprint over there again to talk, and he said eight and a half times out of ten, I take her suggestion. <laughs> But that's got to be so gratifying, right? As yes. A, as a head coach, to, to see a player develop like that and take ownership, make decisions. Become the coach on the floor, be an extension of you, understand. But that's, that's the, the relationship that they have. That's the hours and hours and hours in the film room together and on the floor together, really working to, to become one from a mindset standpoint. Nice bounce pass to Kitley, who gives another one to Soul. Taylor Soul. That's how you move the ball. It sure is. Get the best shot on the floor. That's what he says. We're going to pass up a good shot for a great shot. And that's what, exactly what happened. Great hustle, Amor. And she's fouled out on the perimeter by James. I mean, again, it's textbook. The pocket pass off of the two-man game, the extra pass on the rotation, and Taylor Soul explosive to the rim. Last foul on James, her fourth. First career start. She's got career-high 20 points, but now four fouls. Not a lot of options for Coach Moore, who only has two bench players available today. Greg left open. She is three of four from distance today. Not known for her three-point shooting. Good job by, by Boyd to get inside. And on senior day, De'Asia Gray, Greg, pardon me, has tied her career high with 13 points. Fans here, great turnout at Castle. This is about a 61-year-old building. Showing up for senior day, Georgia Amor. Just off the rim, Greg gives him a fresh 20. 
And then Taylor Soule, outstanding job of keeping that play alive, just getting a hand on it. But that's that energy play. You know, you think about the types of players that Kenny Brooks has had in this system, and oh, goodness. Oh, if that would have gone in, more. if that would have gone in, this place would have exploded. But, but Taylor Soule, by far, one of the most athletic coming in and, and, and really learning and understanding what it means to play like a Hokie and has make, made an impact. Amy Collins into double figures for the second straight game was key in the come from the high win against Carolina on Thursday, but after a, a spurt that got them to within single digits, Virginia Tech well on their way to their 22nd win of the season. Count it for Taylor Soul. That's the fifth on it. Zion James. But Sailor Soul, she understands there's a mismatch. She calls for the ball, faces up, and look at how she goes into the defender to initiate contact. That is a strong move by Taylor Soul. What a game for Isaiah James, the Virginia Beach kid. 20 points, shot the ball well, but just fouled out. Three threes on the afternoon. Now there's only six players available for the pack with a minute and a half left to go. Foul on the follow. Hayes was hacked. Hopefully foul for five. Georgia Amor, her third personal foul. Picks up the foul. Check it in number 23, Kayana Trailer. Trailer comes in for Kayla King. At the line, number 21, Madison Hayes, shooting two. One the senior for another. Good women's basketball game for you tomorrow night on ESPN2 and the app. Number three, Stanford, hosting number 16, UCLA at Maples. Coverage starts at 9 Eastern, 6 Pacific. Stanford with a couple of losses in their Pac-12 recently. Charlie Cream is bracketology. It's going to be a very interesting tournament this year, South Carolina. In that... Close game against Ole Miss, the best team in the country. And they were only up by two with four minutes to go at Ole Miss. South Carolina unbeaten. Okay, number five, Georgia Amor, her fourth personal You've really been impressed with Indiana, right? Yeah, Indiana has been a team that is incredibly disciplined on both ends of the floor, shares the basketball, doesn't make a lot of mistakes, and certainly South Carolina is, is the favorite and have been the favorite. Stanford, UConn, number ones. Iowa, LSU, Utah, Maryland, those number two seeds. And certainly still some room for teams to move into one of those top 16 seeds. And, you know, opening up at home is important. Very much so. And Virginia Tech right now projected as a three seed, which means they would host a first and second round. Five seed in last year's tournament and got bounced early by Florida Gulf Coast in the first round. And one minute with a minute to go, minute Castle Faithful applauding their seniors. But here's a giveaway. And Taylor Soul still hustling. Got back there. Tough shot for Collins. Collins. She's got a dozen. Kenny Brooks has not called the timeout to get his seniors out to get a standing ovation. He figures, like you said when you were at Purdue, they're gonna they're gonna be hosting. They'll be playing on the floor again. And there it goes. There's the timeout. There we go. And he's clearing his bench. It's about to get really loud in here. Number two, Sean Lista. And number two, Clay Ford, as well as 25, Taylor Diamond. By 56%. And they win it. And the NC 
62. By the final of 75-62, Kitley, 24 points, 10 rebounds, Amor, 15 points, and a clear high time, 11 assists. But they just, not that many teams do, but no answer for Kitley. Yeah, no answer for Liz Kitley inside. And you know, Georgia Amor, certainly the ultimate point guard. You know, this is just a finely tuned machine that found their way at the right time for the Virginia Tech Pokers. So Virginia Tech takes it by the final of 75 to 62 in their final home game and in Blacksburg for the regular season. For our crew, Stephanie White, I'm Pam Ward. We're saying so long for now. Let's head it back to Christy, Rebecca, and John. Always just on defense, pressure is also on offense. And they are doing that right now to South Carolina. That game right now, 54-50, just over three minutes to go in Oxford. Let's take a look at this Virginia Tech team because uh, a convincing 75-62 win over NC State this afternoon. And you can make the argument that this is a second weekend team based on the body of work. Yeah, without question. You can make the argument that this is an elite eight type of team. They have the ingredients that you need. They have the anchor inside in Liz Kitley. They have players around her who can score in different ways, whether it's Amor hitting threes or Soul driving the basketball. And they have the experience that you need when you get to, to those late March moments. I've been really impressed with Virginia Tech. Well, you have to have that interior presence. And Elizabeth Kitley, she has been fantastically consistent with what she's been able to do. Today, she had another double double, her 16th of the season. So you know she is on the right track. But defensively, we were just talking about this, Rebecca, mm -hmm. six blocks for Kitley inside. So it's not just her offense that is disruptive for her opponents. It's also on the defensive end. After their last win against Duke, Kenny Brooks, the uh, Virginia Tech coach, said we're playing postseason basketball right now. And their mm -hmm. most recent wins are against postseason teams. Their last three, they won at NC State, a really tough place to play. Then they beat Florida State, they beat Duke, and now they've got this big win as well, shooting 56% mm -hmm. against an NC State team that is very good on the defensive end. You look at the, the dynamic duo, Amor and Kitley, they are putting up sensational numbers over this six-game win streak. I mean, both of them are averaging close to 20 points per game. That is how dynamic right now Virginia Tech is behind those two. And, and, and you and I both know this. When you're a post player, what do you want more than anything is to be surrounded by shooters and guards who are willing to pass, and that's what Kitley has, players who can mm -hmm. keep the floor spread and players who are willing to get the ball inside. Kitley, 24 points, 10 rebounds, 6 blocks, and she is standing by with Pam Ward and Stephanie White. Jeez. Yes, jeez. This is a. <laughs> You're good. Liz Kitley is indeed with us. She gave us a jeez because we just told her that Georgia Amor tied a career high with 11 assists. Your 50th career double double tonight. Uh, had it going. Pretty good senior day. Yeah, I mean, the crowd was amazing. So I have to give props to them. They were giving us a lot of energy, and it was really cool. Um, I think it, this is definitely the biggest crowd I've ever had here in my four years. So it was just awesome, yeah. Yeah, they said one of the. One of the Biggest crowds in history, but coming out to really send this senior class who changed the landscape of, of, of this program, what does it mean to you that they show you this kind of love? It's so cool. I mean, just we've given so much to this program. I mean, there's, I mean, six seniors, and that's, you know, we've all had different experiences come from different places, but at the end of the day, we're finishing in a Hokies uniform, and that's, that's really cool, and I think uh, the crowd really knows that. And the Hokie Nation is just something special. Like, they go so hard, and I'm so appreciative of that. It's a fun environment. And uh, and probably an, uh, uh, we'll be able to host the first and second round. Did you hear him saying one more year, this old super <laughs> chant? I did not. I did not. Yeah, that's, well, uh, great job. Let's get the congratulations. Big win for Virginia Tech. Thank you. All right, so, again, a dominating performance put together by Virginia Tech. NC State, by the way, started the season off 11-1. and They have now gone 7-8. and over their last 15 games.